In this video, we'll learn how to create a realistic looking gold effect in Procreate. Here I've created a color palette by doing a Google search for the keyword gold and selecting colors using the eyedropper. I'll add text by tapping the wrench icon and clicking add text. I'll type the word gold, but you can type whatever you want. Our text frame will only allow us to type within the boundaries of the blue frame, so we'll adjust it by stretching it out the length that we want. Enter the edit panel by clicking the blue edit style icon. We'll change the kerning a little by moving the blue handle left to right on the kerning. Resize again and move it to the upper right of our canvas to allow space for our 3D. Duplicate the layer by swiping right on it and rasterize layer by tapping on it. Rasterizing our layer will allow us to draw on it. Once you've drawn on it, you can't go back and edit it. Next I'll move this layer behind our original text layer and I'll alpha lock it. Alpha lock allows us to draw on our layer only over the pixels that are drawn on that particular layer. It's another way to select that layer without having to use our selection tool. It is always selected. To create our bevel, I'll duplicate our back layer and place it around the text. We'll use the corners and zoom in so that we can make sure that the pixels line up correctly. Once you've placed each layer where you want them and you have a consistent border, merge the layers by either pinching them together or selecting them all, grouping them, and flattening the group layer. Then we'll duplicate the border layer and move it to the angle you prefer. Duplicate the layer again and place it at the same angle. And again. Next we'll merge those layers and repeat the process until we achieve our desired effect. I'll create a new group layer and name it Backups because I stay organized. I'll rasterize our original layer and duplicate our original border and move it behind our original text layer. Making sure our 3D layer is the furthest layer back, we'll start to color our dimensions. I'll start working from dark to light. I'm going from corner to corner, shading in our 3D layer, always considering the angle of the perspective, always thinking about a light source. Anything that is on the bottom or close to an edge, I'll make it a little bit darker. Next, I'll bring it out by adding in some lighter color, adding in a highlight at, on the apex of the curves where I imagine the light would be reflecting from it the most. Change the background layer to something a little less bright. And we'll start to add a lighter highlight, placing it right on the apex of the curve and right in the center of each dimension. Next, we'll select our border layer. First, turn off the alpha lock and next duplicate it and bring it to the front and we'll create a selection to remove from our border layer by tapping on the base color layer and choosing select from the drop down menu. Then we'll go back to our border layer and delete it by swiping down with three fingers and choosing it. Next, we'll create a blur by going to our adjustments by clicking the magic wand icon and selecting Gaussian Blur. I'll set mine to about 5.7. You can adjust the strength of your blur by moving your finger or pencil to the right of the canvas. Select your base layer and begin drawing in your highlight about halfway through the middle of the gold. Select the contents of your border layer by clicking select from the drop down menu and then tap the invert icon and then we'll go back to our base layer and swipe down and, and cut it out. Next, we'll select our original border layer and we'll repeat the process for adding highlights as we did in our 3D layer. Starting from dark to light, I'll add the highlights. As the letter bevels change, so will your light. If you make the bottom level dark, be sure to make the bevel directly opposite lighter. Select your gold layer and be sure to turn on alpha lock. Again, this will ensure that we're only drawing on the pixels of that layer. Grab a little darker color and go in over the tops of the letters to add more texture and darker attributes following the curves of the letter. Then I'll go in and add some directional lines to the letters at the angle of the 3D. And we'll create our drop shadow by going in and selecting our backup group layer and we'll merge them by pinching them together. Select the magic wand and select hue, saturation, and brightness. Then turn down the saturation and the brightness to zero. Select the layer and transform it by clicking the arrow. I'll move it to where I want it and create a blur effect. Select on our shadow layer and turn off the alpha lock. Then go to the adjustment layer and select motion blur option. I'll set mine for around 23. Select a group and move everything higher. Select adjustments and perspective blur and the directional option. 
I'll point the directional arrow diagonally in the same angle of the 3D layer and by dragging your finger or pencil to the right, set it to about 13%. Select Transform in the Freeform option. Select Layer and turn down the opacity to about 78%. Select Eraser Tool and Soft Airbrush. I want to keep the shadow darker toward the letters, so I'm going to lightly erase the outside of the shadow to make it look more realistic. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you found this video useful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Bye.